If you've been trying to learn procedural materials, I know that it can be extremely difficult and making really cool procedural materials might look insanely difficult. But today I wanna to show you that making useful, interesting procedural materials is not that difficult and it's actually very, very approachable. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I make really cool materials very easily with a minimal amount of nodes and of course, a minimal amount of work. And the whole goal of this video is to show you a process that works in a broad use case. So you can take this, instead of just making a distressed paint material, you can go ahead and make a different material with the same concept. So it's useful in a lot of different avenues. So I love this video. I hope you get something out of it. So let's go and do this. Now today's material is gonna very closely resemble one material from the real-time materials add-on, which is in the paint section right here. It's gonna be the chipped paint material, which is one of my favorites. And we're gonna create a duplicate here. So this material right here has a very cool concept. The whole concept is within one node, have one surface reveal another surface, which is this one paint surface revealing this metallic surface beneath it. And it tells a story of some distress. So what we're gonna be creating is this whole concept. So we're going to almost recreate this material here. There's a lot more to it, but we're going to take the concept, kind of bring it down and show you how approachable this is. Now, if you don't know about the real-time materials add-on, it is a pack of 290 materials that I'm updating all the time. You know, we have materials like these cool terrazzo materials here. We even have these insane carbon fiber materials right here. And say so we'll give it a scale of 200, 500. Now we have carbon fiber that we can make it look like that. Uh, and some of my favorites, which is things like the cloth materials, we can apply that and then we can bring the scale up, of course, to make it look more like a believable cloth material. We have exterior surfaces like this dirty asphalt. So all these things in this add-on. So if you're interested in procedural materials um, you and you don't wanna do all that work all the time, this pack is meant to save you a lot of time. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and learn how to do this. So what we're gonna do is go over here to the shading window and um, again, get your sphere. You can even go into uh, add some lighting, just kind of get it to where, and what you can do here is uh, we're gonna be using cycles. So if you click on the cycles button and it's dark, just go ahead and hit these buttons here and you're gonna get some default HDRIs, which is really nice. Uh, so we're gonna build this in Eevee as well. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click new and we're gonna get two materials here. In fact, I'm gonna kill this window and I'm gonna bring this over here and open up the shader editor so we can kind of see a bit better. And you can hear my cat jingling in the background, but I won't stop her. All right, so, so here we go. Let's learn this concept here. Let's make two surfaces. First, let's go ahead and make our metallic surface, which is the one beneath it. And all you have to do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and X that out, click on your model, click new. And uh, again, let's make our two surfaces. So bring over metallic and then bring your roughness down if you want, uh, but that's surface number one. And what we're gonna do now is hit shift A, search PRIN, principled BSDF. Let's make our surface number two, make it all the way white. In fact, actually we can go ahead and make it orange like in the uh, original thing I showed you. Bring your roughness up a little bit. This is surface number one and surface number two. Now shift A and search and get in a mix shader. We're gonna be dealing with these two guys, but let's just go ahead and get this concept um, understood first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this and plug this here. And this is going to, this guy is gonna allow you to have these two speak to each other with this factor slider. So if you bring factor to one, you only see the metallic surface. You only see the metallic surface. You bring it over, you only see your paint surface. And let's get them to speak to each other with this magic little guy right here. And so that is really the, the, the mindset here is let's make some surfaces within the node editor and then let's use some nodes to get them to speak to each other to go, okay, I need to open up to allow, make it look like there's chips in, all that fun stuff. And so what I'm gonna do is use this factor slider and manipulate it. So we need to go ahead and get a color ramp. And if you don't know what that is, you'll see how it works in a minute. I'm a visual learner, so I'm just gonna apply that. Now we need to get in the texture that's going to allow these two to speak to each other. Because essentially, this is our current texture. It's just kind of a gradient between the two of each other. So what we're gonna do is get a Voronoi, and then we're gonna go from Euclidean to Minkowski. And then we're gonna plug the distance into the color ramp. And you're like, well, what's the distance? What's that? 
Well, there's color and distance, and I never touch position. I've That's for crazy stuff. So distance allows this. Notice that there's kind of a gradient between the two. Now color allows this, where it's just a solid, hard edge. So that's the difference. Distance allows a gradient, which is what we're going to need for later. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of play with this ex exponent and kind of bring this down to something like this. And then we can bring that scale up and then play with that exponent till we just kind of have this and then bring your color ramp in to bring in the size. You might say, well, where's the mapping and the texture coordinate? We'll get into that later. I just want to keep this as simple as possible. And so what this texture allowed was now you're revealing the metallic material and the paint material on top of each other. And you have a gradient which is going to allow us to make it look like it's actually beneath, which is a really fun process. So here we go. So I'm kind of happy with where this is now. And you can bring in your color ramp to kind of solidify that edge, but that will be more visual with what we're going to do now. But again, you can play with the scale of them. So what we're going to do now is get a bump node to make them look like they're actually ones beneath the other. So what I'm going to do is shift a B U M bump and because, and we need to figure out, Hey, what node, what surface, metallic surface, principled surface, which one needs to have the bump? Well, it's the one on top. So let's go ahead and put the normal here and then we can plug this color ramp into the height. And now look at that. Now it actually looks like one is beneath the other. We're already making a relatively complex idea with just one, two, three, four, five, six nodes. That's it. And here we go. So let's just kind of break this down before we go any farther. Surface, we have our metallic surface and we have our paint surface and they're plugged into this guy, which allows them to, to speak to each other. And then we need the factor to say, all right, well, let's, let's use a texture to reveal them, kind of like a curtain. And so this Voronoi texture is the curtain, essentially, that's revealing the paint and the, the, the metallic where I want them to be shown. And then this color ramp manipulates the shape of that. So if we bring this color ramp over, you notice how that looks. And you can say we have this, and I want to bring this in so that it's not so big of an edge right here. And then right over here, you can see the bump node, you can play with the strength, or like how deep that's going to look. And you can even do like 0.1 on the distance. So it's a little bit more accurate, then you can play with that strength. So it's not so strong, doesn't look like a rock hit it so hard. All right, this is pretty much what I wanted to show you. Now that kind of concept is out of the way. Let's make this look like a real, you know, actually useful material. And the problem here is this doesn't happen in real life, this crazy thing. So what we need to do is use a texture to add um, detail to this edge, because the term is it's planar. There's no detail, it's just one solid thing. So what we need to do is now uh, go to your preferences, if you haven't already done it, and get the node wrangler. So you go to the add-ons, you type in node, node wrangler right here. And what that's going to allow is if you click on the Voronoi, hit control T, that gives you a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Here's why we want to use that. I know we're now we're just adding a bunch of materials that don't make any sense, uh, nodes that don't make any sense. But essentially the mapping node, it allows you to move the texture around your object and then use the object coordinate. If you're planning to put this material in other things, it'll be able to scale it properly. And then maybe we can bring this to like five. That looks nice. Um, and so this just simply allows you to move the texture around your model. It's mapping it to the model. This guy, we don't even need to worry about it. Just use the object coordinate on most things and then UV coordinate if your model needs to be unwrapped, um, which I believe this model is unwrapped. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it is. And so now it's actually going to react properly. But I honestly don't want to deal with UVs. We'll just go with object. All right, but forget about that. Just worry about the mapping. That's what's going to basically move this thing around when you need variation. So back to what we were talking about. We have this whole thing, but of course, the, these guys need to have more detail. So what does that mean? Let's get our noise texture. Noise texture and apply it 
right here and then just let that load. EV takes a while to load procedural materials. Um, there we go, all right. So now we have them all wonky. We bring our detail to 12. That's really all we're going to need. And if you hear this weird noise, my cat's playing with a rat, I'm gonna go move it. All right, I'm back. She was playing with a noise, a noise toy. All right, so here we have this. What I'm gonna do, uh, so we have the detailed 12. Now, here's what I mean by detail. See all this organic looking mess? That's what we wanted. But now we've ruined the idea of these big holes in the whole section. So we only wanna use a little bit of it. So we're gonna go ahead and get a mix node. And this is the node I was talking about that they changed. It used to be called a mix RGB. Well, that's because they called it mix and you have to go to color. And now we have access to that. So let's just flop, plop it right there and plug this vector from the mapping node into B. All right, so now it's pretty much just like this mix shader conceptually, where now you have two things dealing. You have one factor, factor of one, which is essentially this Voronoi texture not being affected by the noise texture at all. And if you bring the factor to zero, now the noise texture is completely affecting the Voronoi texture. And what that allows us to do is just to introduce the noise just a tiny bit to utilize that, that uh, detail, but not completely destroy what we wanted, which is these circles of denting and distortion. So you bring that factor over a little bit till you are satisfied with the distortion that it brings to your object right there, I think I'm happy with that. And then what I wanna do is make these, these scratches and dents smaller. So bring that in, bring this in, bring that in. There we go, now they're smaller. All right, now we have all of this. Now I did a lot of explaining, but still it's not that insanity. I mean, it's not that crazy. Um, when it comes to like one surface revealing another surface beneath it, which happens all the time in real life. Even if you have like a flat surface and you had a roughness on top, now that's dust, you have fun with that. Um, here we go, this is it. Or say you have one surface and then you use an image texture to reveal another surface on top of it, you can do that with one shader, it doesn't need to be crazy. So that's kind of why this is pretty useful in real life. Now. We just need to go ahead and make this surface look a little more believable by adding some roughness to it. So let's go ahead and get another one of my favorite color ramps, noise texture, right here. And you can add that mapping here if you'd like to. It's not really gonna change the way it looks, but compatibility. And then we'll plug the color ramp into the roughness here. So now what I'm gonna do, we can kind of see the light affecting it already. Here on this noise texture, bring it to 12, bring your roughness all the way up. And then if you bring these in, you'll notice now we can kind of play with how that surface looks. See how it's extremely glossy? That's because this is black. The white equals extremely rough. So extremely rough means white, and then majority black means very glossy. So you can just bring that up a little bit till it's like this, and then you can just kind of have them relate to each other a little bit. All right, there we go. So if we go into my cycles view, this, is my material, we'll go to scene world, scene lights. This is the material that I had in the beginning. Of course, it's a little too glossy still, so we can bring that black portion up so farther up. There we have it. And that is our material. Of course, it's not exactly like the original material. I was able to go in and add a lot more detail with other stuff, it went insane. Um, but you can kind of build off of that with this concept of making really, um, really complex materials relatively approachable with this. So let's go ahead and just explain everything we did. Let's do another breakdown. So what is everything? This is your paint surface. This is your metallic surface. They're both plugged into your mix shader, which allows them to speak to each other. And then we used a Voronoi texture. So this right here, the factor line, it's the dedicated, the, the, the whole factor line is dedicated to showing and how it shows one material on another. This whole line of, the, of nodes allows it to look cool and look interesting and believable. And then of course we have some simple roughness and we can actually plug that into the roughness of the metal too. And we have a bump node making that gradient look awesome. All right, there it is. That's how you do it. That's how you make these crazy materials. Now, if you hated all of that, you can just use real time materials. Uh, you, can head, you can check it out in the description. We have, um, let's see, let's go to the paint materials. Let's apply a different paint material here, boom. 
it's that easy. So if you don't like doing all that, but you want the power procedural materials, I have a add on for you if you wanna check that out. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Um, I love procedural materials, not everybody does, but if I can help you make them seem more approachable, I'm happy to do it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.